Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So again, today we're gonna to be taking things for a bit of a turn. Actually, there'll be no turns at all because we're gonna be drag racing. And I'm actually inviting you to join me uh, because this is the Drag Race Showcase uh, 2022. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, what a showcase is, is where I collect submissions from you, and then I usually will stream uh, me driving your cars. All of this takes place on my Discord, link will be in the description, but today I'm going to be building a car for this challenge that won't actually be competing, it's just an example, uh, and I'll be telling you the rules as we go, but if you want all of the info, it's going to be in the description and in the Discord. There'll be a pinned comment and a channel that's called Showcase. Uh, discussion and then the showcase submissions as well so before we get too complicated let's just talk about what's going on so we haven't done a showcase in a while because the game keeps getting updated like I was just looking at the updates the game gets updated like once every three days so it's going to be a little bit difficult to collect these things properly but it's the same format as I've done before where I take your automation file and then I export it myself. Mods are allowed, but only ones from Delta's collection. I'll have that linked in the description. And I'm going to be breaking things into three classes. We've got rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, and four wheel drive, and then front wheel drive. So there'll be three winners of this challenge. The hardest class to win in will be all wheel drive. So that's what I'm going to use as a demo today. But I would encourage you to try front wheel drive and rear because those ones will be a little bit less competitive and it'll be more interesting, I think, as well to see what kind of weird cars we get there. So the name of the game is to try and make the absolute fastest drag car that you can. And there are no rules other than don't cheat, basically. <laughs> don't hack the game. You can probably use this dragster body if you want to. I'm not going to for my purposes, but I mean, if you want to, go ahead. I'm going to be a little bit more creative instead of trying to be the absolute best and pick this VK Holden 1978 sedan. It's probably way too heavy to be competitive, but I think it'll be a fun car to build into a drag racer and it kind of already looks the part. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on in the back end there. The wheels are extremely small, but all of that is going to change. So styling doesn't matter in this showcase, speed is king, uh, but keep in mind that I'm going to be driving it, so whatever you do, I would suggest that you make it <laughs> so that it's drivable by somebody of my skill level. Dual clutch is a great option, although if you want me to shift it, then you're going to be at the mercy of my shifting, just keep that in mind. Historically speaking, automatics are actually faster in drag racing, so do if you want to do dual clutch, auto manual, or advanced auto, you're probably going to be good. As you'd likely suspect, there's no limit on quality sliders or anything, no limit on engine sizes. V16 if you want to, it's whatever can fit basically. Uh, and in this case, I'm curious to see what we can get in this car. Uh, maybe a V8, V8 no problem, V12 no problem, V16 no problem, okay. It won't fit a max size V16, <laughs> that I found out quite quickly. But it will fit, okay, it will almost fit a max size V10. If I do direct acting overhead cam, it'll definitely fit a max size V10. You know, this is going to be a bit of a screamer. Okay, I'm going max sized V12, 15 liters. I decided to lop off the extra 4 for the V16. I want to show you that it's possible to make something ridiculous even if you don't have the V16 DLC. Uh, this is going to be a twin turbo dual overhead cam with 4 valve. Uh, V12. We don't want to make it too heavy, so this might actually be too big, but I'm going to chance it. Also keeping in mind that this is entirely on the front end, so uh, I'm going to have to be careful with that. The weight at the front end of this car is going to be significant. So I'm going to go turbo because that's the only way to really get the power that we need for this, and obviously I'm going quad turbo. No intercooler gives more power. Smart boost should help uh, with this as well. And then I think that setup should be good. I'm making this as new as it can be. 2020 is the best we can get. But for now, it's just going to be the best possible stuff. Methanol fuel, because I think everybody should probably be running methanol in this showcase. Turbo race headers. 
nothing here and obviously quality goes all the way up 1182 horsepower not bad okay so i'm going to be paying a lot more attention to curves here than i normally do this thing currently revs to 3700 rpm which is terrible so i'm gonna have to quickly adjust the turbo size full race and we get 3226 horsepower that is a lot <laughs> but for a 15 liter v12 obviously we can do a lot more than that couple of tweaks and we're at 3800 horsepower um i yeah i don't know what i'm gonna have to do about this the thing is we can make more raw power without an intercooler but with an intercooler we'll probably have better reliability because the turbo actually gets cooled which is kind of important so I don't know. The reality is it actually needs to last through at least one pass, which I can't say has happened for some of my other cars. Like right now I'm making 4,200 horsepower, I'm just cranking the turbine or compressor size even larger. We're cruising at 4,800 horsepower, probably gonna hit 5,000 horsepower, okay, this is looking good. That's 5,088 horsepower, <laughs> just, a, just a touch, you know, just a little bit. These shouldn't be a problem as long as we can get the cooling we need because the engine does only need to do one pass. However, <laughs> I am a little bit worried. Um, the engine is very, very square, so you never know here. Uh, lightweight? No, lightweight's not going to do it. Yeah, I basically have to stick with the absolute best stuff that I can get. 5,200 horsepower at 8,100 RPM. We do have a really decent torque curve though. It's nice and flat here, so... I'm hoping that uh, I can stay above this with my shifts and then always be in the big torque, <laughs> hopefully. So we can get more power very easily just by making this turbo even larger, or these turbos I should say because there are four of them and they are massive. Uh, that being said, do we really need 5,500 horsepower? Are we actually going to have enough traction to last through 5,500 horsepower? Probably not. By the way, you can gain serious extreme power by turning up the boost, but I want that high RPM, so I'm actually going to purposefully limit the boost in order to get higher RPM at 8400 and not have this stuff explode. Yeah, so when it comes to the turbos, stuff like standard geometry does actually affect your curve quite significantly. That's why I'm going variable. And we do have journal bearing, but they're crap, so always ball bearing. Okay, this is going to be one of those engines where we really just have to see how it goes. Uh, I'm trying to get a little bit of power here and there without affecting my RPM, and I mean, so far it's kind of easy to do. <laughs> it looks like we're going to get to that 6k and beyond without much trouble. 6400 horsepower, that's probably too much. And aesthetically speaking, let's throw some paint on there, I don't know, wrinkle paint, make it a nice blue. And then boom, we've got a <laughs> we've got a decent looking, absolutely ridiculous quad turbo V12. And maybe we can have it say VTEC on there. You know how it is. Okay, the engine itself weighs 500 kilos. That's a bit of a problem. So <laughs> let's hope that it actually works out. So this is our body of choice. It's not going to be well. Actually, let me try and move it around a little bit. If we can get a bit more width out of it, that would be good. But it doesn't look like we can. Unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, there, there's no morphing on this body, which kind of makes it a bad choice for this, but don't worry about it. <laughs> First thing we're going to do, we're going to skip fixtures and stuff because ultimately it doesn't matter. I will put some on just for the holy mackerel. The intake sticks right out of the hood. <laughs> I like what I'm seeing. Oh my goodness, this is a drag car through and through. Look at that turbo. Yeah, we're absolutely going to leave that hanging out the front, by the way. Uh, dual clutch is my choice, seven speeds. The thing is that the gearbox tuning is extremely important, and we're going to have to be very specific with that. Now, the goal of this showcase is to beat the previous showcase's record, which was two years ago, by the way, of 6.5 seconds on the West Coast uh, drag strip. So I'm going to try to do the best that I can do to beat that today. And then I'm hoping that during the actual showcase, we can destroy it. Because as you saw, I mean, this thing has over 6,000 horsepower. That was like <laughs> very difficult back in the day, especially not for this engine. Okay, apparently the car is threatening to do 588 kilometers an hour. That's what I like to see. But again, gearing is super, super important. So we got to be very careful with this. Um, 
because if we have way too high a top speed, then we're just going <laughs> to it be inefficient getting there. We're trying to get to the end of the course, and that's it. Whatever's after, I don't know. doesn't matter. So if this has to be limited in order to get us a better ratio, then so be it. Power distribution is extremely key. I remember I did a bit of an autopsy. It's not a good word for it, but I did a bit of a dissection of the previous car uh, that won the last showcase, and it had a distribution of, I think, 70-30, something like that. So it was mostly rear and uh, or could have been front, actually. I think it might have been further to the front than the back, but its distribution was really funky, and it made a big difference in the way that the car worked. In this case, all of the weight is on the front, so it might actually be more advantageous to put the uh, weight at least a little bit that way. The only way to find out is to test it, so I'm going to start off at 70-30, 70, 70 to the rear, 30 to the front, and then we'll kind of figure it out from there. Tires, obviously semi-slicks, we need the slickest boys we can get, and also the biggest tires, especially on the rear that we can get. Front doesn't matter as much, but it is an all-wheel drive car, so we do need something there, <laughs> the best that we can do. I'm going to try to put that out as much as I can, which is basically nothing on this body. And I'm going to increase the size of the wheels as well, specifically the wheels at the back, and I'm going to shrink the front a little bit. Maybe we'll do that and see how it goes. Those are pretty fat, but they're not quite as fat as I'd like. Um, so we'll have to kind of have to hope that I can get bigger than that. Watch me build this entire car and then find out that this body doesn't work in BMNG. That would be brilliant, but <laughs> we got to hope that the big opal actually works out. Uh, brakes, not really that important. We're not going to be stopping at all during this, but we do have to have enough braking power to be able to set ourselves up for the line. So <laughs> I got to do something here. Just basically the lightest stuff we can get maybe only four in the front, uh, big discs in the front, and then uh, we'll just go with this in the back because it's light. Aerodynamics, this is pretty important, but we don't want too much drag. I'm actually just going to hit the flow optimize section, um, and I don't have any wings on this car. These are just fixtures, or these are not fixtures, they're just body panels. So we're going to have to kind of make our own wings here. Uh, in order to get any downforce, which is probably going to be key with 6,000 horsepower. Cooling airflow is extremely important, but we don't want too much drag, so I don't know. i got to be careful. Up goes the quality once again. No convertible stuff, no seats, uh, I think half seats. I'm honestly unsure. I, I used to know this, but one of these is lighter than the other. We'll go single seat for now. Basic, and then absolutely nothing in there. Uh, lower weight for higher interior quality. See, I'm going to do power steering because it's going to complain, and I'm actually going to do traction control because I want this to be drivable, but we're very likely just going to turn it off, so no need to worry there. The thing is, and this is an important thing for your car, I'm not going to modify it at all from how it comes, so if you put traction control on, uh, I will just leave it on and your car will be in comfort mode for the race, so I would advise you not to put traction control on your car. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. Safety is going to be at a none <laughs> because uh, safety sucks. Let's go for lightweight and let's go more weight distribution in the back. Although that is going to pull back the engine, so maybe not completely. Something like that. It's arguable whether or not this actually does anything in BMNG, but yeah, <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay, suspension is important. We're going to be loading this thing up. Uh, I'm just going to go standard, I think. We probably could get away with active sport as well. I'm just worried about weight. Hmm. Adaptive? Gas monotube, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> this car is going to have some problems no matter what. I'm liking this race preset, but at the same time, I think it's going to have to be stiffer. Drivability is really high, sportiness is not. Since we discovered that the stiffest suspension actually doesn't do as much as I thought it would, I'm going to go extremely stiff on the dampers on the back and the front because I don't want the power to transfer down into the suspension. I kind of just want this thing to just boom across. Um, so maybe maybe not quite the lowest, but we're going to go stiff, that's for sure. And we're going to want some pretty tight sway bars as well. Maybe not too tight, but tight enough. <laughs> I don't know. Everything is difficult. The design of this, okay, so... 
6,408 horsepower, 1,715 kilos. I'm going to quickly slap some decals on this, um, but first I want to talk about exporting because this is important these days. The export is going to look like this. So I'm not going to force unbreakable fixtures, but I am going to use experimental aerodynamics, I think, uh, unless we figure out that that's a bad idea, which we might. But for now, this is the default that it's exporting in. So I'm just going to export it like this exactly. So I would suggest that you test yours with this setup. I don't do gray too often, so I'm actually kind of kind of happy with that. It looks really good. So I realize that this is a real car, but I'm kind of just doing whatever I want to because uh, that's what I tend to do most of the time anyways. Uh, we're just putting a big old hole in the front of it because, because, because. Okay, I found a better one, one that's slightly more flush with the actual intake and overall just kind of looks absolutely ridiculous. Having a massive hole in the front of the car is lovely. Okay, so I've done a few things just to give it a little bit of life. Uh, basically, I just put a wing on the trunk here, just a small one, and then a little bit of a lip on the front so we can have some tunability in that department. Obviously, we have some absolutely killer exhaust because this stuff is huge, which is fun. Uh, you just don't have to look at it too long <laughs> to see that it's totally broken. Um, and then, obviously, the big old hole in the hood. Everything else, though, is nice. Like, it's a nice, sleek car. I think I'm just going to cut some holes where the headlights might be. And then uh, no mirrors, nothing else there, just easy stuff. And then eventually what you could do if you want to, to go all out, is put on some badges. Like, there are tons of sponsorships and stuff in this game, so feel free to absolutely deck the heck out of your car. I recognize these logos from Grid, <laughs> which is really funny that they made it in here Raven West. Yikes. But yeah, if you want to make your own fancy livery, then uh, we're going to definitely be taking a look at them when they come in. Okay, the exhaust has decided to do a bit of a ridiculous bend, but uh, don't worry about it because <laughs> everything here is looking fine. Uh, I just kind of decided to make it a little bit more interesting. I think it's cool. But that means that the front end and the entire styling of the car is done. It's time to test it out in BeamNG and see how it reacts on its first few drag attempts uh, and see if we can chase down that 6.5. This thing has an absolutely ridiculous amount of power and I'm really hoping that if nothing else, it actually works. <laughs> Hold on a minute though, I forgot something in the back. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to tune the arrow and we're still making negative downforce, so uh, maybe turn this up a little bit and see if we can get some positive stuff going. Okay, so I just loaded in the car and it sounds nasty in a good way. Like, sick nasty, that kind of nasty. There's something wrong with the V12 exhaust system because this is ridiculous. Just listen to this. And then the idle. Whoa, that's choppy. Holy. Okay, <laughs> well then, I mean, I'm taking this a little more seriously now. I'm going to immediately turn off the ESC that I had initially put on. Um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. This car is absolutely shockingly quick, but it has no traction on regular ground. <laughs> so, um, while I have made a very ridiculous vehicle, it can't do much, <laughs> which is fine, but uh, I'm hoping that once we get it on the drag strip, my ears will stop bleeding and I'll finally be able to smash a good lap with it. So when I'm doing the run for your car, I'm not going to go into sport mode. You're going to have to be able to get six and a half seconds in drive, just regular drive if you have a dual clutch, uh, just because it's easier for me to do the timing and stuff without having to get into sport mode. Now, for my purposes, because I uh, am giving myself any advantage I can get, I'm going to attempt to do this. Uh, current just run here with sport mode, no ESC. I'm, I'm doing things that I'm not going to do for you. And... Oh my goodness, it hangs on the gears so hard. The turbo's overheating, but that is such a fast lap. This car is so stable, I'm just extremely pleased. Okay, let's give it an actual run and see what it'll do, and I'll show you the fastest drag car I've ever made. Let's see if the AI can drive it better than I can. It is entirely possible that they can, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Up on the line here. The AI can't seem to get the car started. That's a good start. Okay, there we go. 
back in action <laughs> worrying when the ai can't even drive your car uh but yeah the ai i believe they don't rev the engines oh my goodness i jumped a line okay s1 just the tap of the throttle stopping and beautiful reaction time it hangs on the gears way too much oh my goodness six nine pretty darn fast but that isn't 6.5. I think it has something to do with the gearing. So how we're really going to do this is going to the West Coast USA. I'm going to pick the drag strip just like this. And it'll just be whatever vehicle we're driving. So in this case, it'll be that car. Select. And then you can see the fastest time here is 6.517. That's the fastest I've ever done on this stretch. I'm going to give your car two runs. I'm probably going to do a lot more for myself here. But uh, basically... It's just two runs because I know that it's going to be pretty, uh, I, I think there's going to be a lot of submissions. So it's important that we try to limit things so the stream doesn't go too long. Now fuel volume, I'm turning it down to 10 liters. I don't think we're going to burn more than 10 in this run. So I'm going to change that real quick. And we do have the option here to change our gear ratios because, yes, uh, thankfully BeamNG now offers that. And we should also have the possibility of turning down the tire pressure. You can see the front is at 32 and the back is at 24. Like what, what's going on with that? So let's just go 19, 19 and see if that helps with the traction a little bit. And then it's going to come down to this. By the way, here's the power to the rear torque split. So we can actually change that now in BeamNG without having to go back into automation. I think this car has a 6.5 in it. We're just going to have to give it a little time here a little bit of practice uh, but oh i just skipped the line <laughs> extremely hard wow i'm still in comfort mode esc so this is going to be a crap run i'm curious to see how much of a difference that actually makes 7.2 huh so it's a 0.3 second difference off of our previous run starting absolutely hammered again this time without sport mode on this time with wheel spin a plenty i got a 7.1 again hmm my modifications are not working as well as I thought they would. So just to put things in perspective, I tried a few runs. 6.9, yikes. With the regular transmission, not using the sports setup, I was doing a 7.6. So it's like significantly different in sport mode. Uh, but that's a 6.9. Not bad at all for this car. That is a pretty ridiculous run. I'm going to try to do that again, but I'm going to try a different power split this time. I want to see what it's like if the car has, say, 50... Well, actually, let's do kind of the opposite. Let's do 30% on the back and 30% on the front just to see what that does. Okay, that's way less wheel spin on the rear. Turbo's overheating. 7.3. Hmm. Not as good, but I gotta give it a few tests before I'm sure. I'm starting after the one disappears every single time, so I think I'm getting a fair comparison. 7-2 again. Hmm, so the power split seemingly is not the problem. Very consistent, another 7-2. Okay, I'm gonna try a different start and see if that helps, because the wheel spin at the beginning is definitely hurting us. Okay, that time I decided to start a little bit less than 9,000 RPM, but I don't think it quite worked. 7-2 again. Uh, and by the way, by the time we get to the end of the drag strip, the engine needs a rebuild, so you know it's a real drag car. Alright, 50-50, let's see what it does. 50-50 split, and uh, hopefully that gives us some decent stuff here. Uh, first gear... Oh, man, that the gearing is so tough, because... What's happening is I'm running through pretty much all my gears um, and I'm wondering if maybe I should have made it like a six speed or something because we're losing time with this shifting. Uh, that being said, the more ideal the ratio, the better. So it's like a compromise between the two that we need. I'm just going to make sure that's applied and give this another run. Up into sport mode, just the same start I've been doing. Maybe jump the light a little bit that time. But the game should compensate. 6-4, what the? No, I jumped the light for sure. 6-4-9. 50-50 torque split might have been the key this entire time. That is the fastest ever drag time I've done. But honestly, I can't be sure that it's legit. i got to try one more time, just to be sure. 
You're seeing it live here, folks. And... <laughs> Come on, car. You're so quick. Just give me the best time. 6-6. Six, six. Ooh. Yeah, that's nuts. Oh, man. Okay, I gotta chase that 6-4 again. 6-6 six, six again. Ooh, so consistent. What did I do that one time? Dang, that is exactly the same time as the previous run, and I had a little bit of a different technique on it. Crazy. Oh, man. So I beat the record that I wanted to beat, 6.491, although possibly with a little bit of a light jump there. And then 6-6 six, six seems to be my most consistent run yet. Ah, <laughs> that's crazy. I, I'm gonna call it. Like, I think I don't need any more configuration. Or reconfiguration, I should say. Can I take out another six liters of fuel and get better better stuff here? Can I put another 10% to the rear and get better stuff here? Like, this is all the kind of testing that you've got to do to make the fastest car you can, but even then, my runs are not as consistent as they should be. Like, <laughs> it's difficult to nail things perfectly every time, so I'm going to run it with this configuration again and see what happens, and then we'll wrap things up. This has got to be it, though. This has got to be it. All the way up in S1. Oh, that's a ripper right there. Come on. It's got no fuel in the tank. It's just enough to get through this. 6-7. Oh. I'm going the wrong way. Okay, I gave it a massive whiff off the start this time, and I want to see if that makes a difference. Oh, the ESC is on. No wonder I'm having problems. Hold on a minute. Big spender. Let's do it. Come on. Out of the wall. Stay out of the wall. 6-7, no! Oh. oh man, this car is burning my eyes out. It's difficult to see, but this thing is absolutely ridiculous, and I really like it. <laughs> this is definitely one of my more favorite, uh, just pure racing cars that I've made. But, you know, it's not as good as it could be, and I think that there's a lot more potential in it. Um, so, I mean, hey, if you want to make something as wicked as this, feel free to do so. Best me in this category, please, and thank you. I want to see you smash this all-wheel drive record. I think the best I've seen on the Discord so far is 6.3 something, so if you can't beat that, you're probably not fit for the all-wheel drive category. I would suggest trying the rear wheel if you really want to get into the fun stuff. Same thing with front. I, I better see at least one Nissan Versa, by the way. One Versa in the crowd is what we need. <laughs> I should probably talk about this now, but uh, due dates for this stuff. Submission is going to be in two weeks because I think that that just makes more sense for uh, my time schedule. So you've got two weeks to make a car, which gives you a lot of time to test. Uh, I'm going to be away next week and I'm not going to be on the Discord too much. So I'm not going to be accepting submissions for the first week. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes in terms of people's builds and if that makes things better or worse. Uh, but you'll have a lot of time to figure it out is basically my point. So I'm excited to see what you guys can do. Feel free to ask me questions in the Discord if you need to, but I think this one's fairly straightforward. And as always, be sure to post a picture of your car when you submit it. And tell me what category it's in just beforehand so I can organize it in a folder. It just makes it easier for me when I'm collecting all this stuff. Uh, because yeah, there, there probably will be quite a few submissions this time and I'm really looking forward to it. So send me your best drag car and I'll see you on the track. By the way, just as a side note for this video as a whole, if you've enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to this channel. We're getting close to 50k and I want to hit that before the end of the year. And also, all of these showcases are supported by my merch store, which is automotiveflux.com. I haven't had any stickers being sent out for a while now, but I still have quite a few of them, so if you want one, uh, be sure to just let me know <laughs> by buying one on the website and I'll send one promptly to you. They're $5 with no shipping fees all across the globe. So yeah, um, that's it for now. <laughs> Maybe the Opal re will return once we have some more tips and tricks from the showcase, but it turns out that having a massive engine isn't the only thing you need. 6,400 horsepower wasn't enough to beat the record. I'm betting somebody will be able to do it with like 1500. Probably a four cylinder turbo and a Honda Civic. Foreshadowing. <laughs> okay, see you then.
It's time to thank those who have chosen to support this channel, specifically Overlord QT Barataria One, J Pope, Davis Heister, the German Dude, and Nat64, Sinlab, Goofy Plays, Badger, and Phoenix Shark. Thank you everybody for your support. Channel still has been doing incredible lately. It's very encouraging, guys, and I know that you've been around for a long time and you're seeing the growth, so yeah, thank you. See you again soon.